So today we're going to have a look at recommendation systems. And in this particular case, we're talking about what I'm calling personalized recommendations. So a bit of a corny pun, but it is very um, different from the idea of looking at personalized recommendations. It's the idea that a person essentially you can think of as being multiple different people for the purposes of recommendation. So each person we can generally think of as having many different personas. There's, there's various, various different facets and aspects to individuals. And this is true in a number of different ways. So we can think of people as having very different social circles. So they have different groups of friends, which may be work related friends or university or hobbies or interests. And equally, the sorts of things that they're interested in, their tastes in terms of music or movies or websites, um, can vary quite a lot. So I, I don't know about, um, I imagine many other people are similar to myself and that they have a lot of different musical tastes, depending on what sort of mood you're in and, and what sort of activities you're doing. And things like movies as well, there are very diverse uh, watching patterns. If you think of people who are at home with the kids in the daytime watching Pixar type movies, and then when the kids are in bed at night, they'll have a very different kind of viewing profile. So this is um, something that's really a part of every single individual. Um, and when we're doing recommendations, it makes sense to try and think of these as having representing different personas or different people. So let's take an example, um, looking at music. Um, and we have, for example, here a JSON document, which represents a user. And we've got a, an array of the various different artists that that user happens to like. So it's a fairly sort of diverse set of bands here. So I've only drawn out four here as an example, but a typical user will have tens, dozens of, of bands in their list. Um, but let's just consider these four for the moment. So if we took them just as a flat list, uh, and then we could use something like significant terms in Elasticsearch to say, um, look at all the tastes of all the other people who like any of these bands and tell me what they like. Um, and generally speaking, that's not a particularly good way of doing recommendations. And the reason being is that it's a bit like asking um, for recipes and saying, well, what goes well with fish and cheesecake? I like fish, I also like cheesecake, um, but um, it's very hard to actually find an ingredient that would actually go well with both of these things, perhaps cream. But generally speaking, you're talking about, you know, leeks go with fish and uh, I don't know, maybe ice cream or something that goes with cheesecake. So they're very different things. So it shows that you have to break down the various different things that are in people's lists of tastes and then target your recommendations um, towards each of those sort of clusters. And this is really what this, this uh, presentation is about, and we'll get to some code examples of how you can do that in a minute. So let's rethink uh, this flat list and, and try and think of this as a graph. So we can take this one document here from this one user, and we have his list of uh, likes, and conceptually we can organize them and think of them as a graph. So this one document suggests that all of these bands are somewhat related. And right now we don't have a lot of evidence to support that. We've only got this one person's opinion that these bands are all kind of somehow related. So what would be ideal is if we could actually start to consider the uh, opinions of other people as well to sort of fill in some of the, uh, the connections here. And this is something that we can do uh, using the graph API. So the function that I've got here on the left is actually a query to get a selection of other users. Um, and then we're going to return um, a summary of their tastes in the form of a weighted graph. So the query itself is looking for people who have at least two of the artists in this list here. So they have two of the four artists here so we can actually draw them on a line here and say, oh, this guy's got these two particular bands in, in, in common. And we might have, uh, as I say, 50 or 60 different bands uh, for this one user to consider here. So what we wouldn't want to do is spend all of our time examining a bunch of users who are only describing one of the lines on this diagram. And that's why we're using a, a random um, scoring system here. So we're saying, I want to get 5,000 users because we want to actually try and limit the amount of time that we spend running this, this particular graph exploration. So we're using a form of kind of random walk, um, but we're directing it towards at least those people who are help, going to help describe this graph here. So it's quite a sort of a interesting query here. We could actually 
do away with this and say have a very big sample size, but it will just mean that we uh, end up having to look at a lot more data to arrive at the same answer, essentially. So that's controlling the, uh, the set of people whose tastes we're gonna consider. And then the vertices and the connections part of the graph query down here describe which bits of the graph we're going to be exploring. And we're quite deliberately constraining it here. So we actually have an include statement that says, the entry points into the graph that we're looking for are only um, the set of uh, artists in the current likes array. And the connections we're trying to reach, again, are just the set of artists in the current likes array. So it's a way of using all these other people to help fill in the connections that this one user has perhaps sort of tentatively drawn between these, these particular artists. And the net effect, when we hit the button, is we can see that all these various different users um, strengthen the connections in this data. And we now have a weighted graph. So the results of the graph API call that we just made are going to present us with this um, strengthened picture of which bits of the graph are, are connected together. Now, one of the things that is useful to do is to actually then trim the graph down to just those strong connections and not the kind of spurious ones that this individual user has in these kind of eclectic tastes. So we're gonna use a function to do that. So the first line is where we get the results back from the previous query. And the code below is really just loading uh, a subset of the results that come back from Elasticsearch into a graph object. So we're using a thing called Netbook X, which is a graph library to hold our graph in memory. And we are using uh, a trimming function here to just reiterate around the connections that Elasticsearch has returned and only take the top N uh, edges, the most important and the most significant ones. And when we mean significant, that isn't the same as saying popularity. So significance is all about what we call the uncommonly common. So if I had the Beatles in the playlist here, that would undoubtedly be a, a common connection between all the various different bands in, in the graph. But we would instinctively know that this was uh, what we call commonly common. It isn't particularly interesting to have that connection. So it's only unless it's increased in frequency beyond that which we would expect from a random sample um, that we would think of it as being a significant connection. Um, and this is a key part of the, uh, the significance algorithms that the graph engine supplies, which the long and short of it means that we actually focus in on the meaningful connections. So if we trim these weak links away, then we're left with uh, a, a graph that's somewhat split into clusters, which I've colored here for the purposes of illustration. And we can see that there are actually multiple, if you like, personas that are related to this person. And these are the things that are much more useful to begin to ask for recommendations about. So rather than asking for the equivalent of things that go well with fish and cheesecake, we can now focus in on saying, well, it looks like we have a bunch of fishy related things and a bunch of cheesecakey related things. Um, in this case, it's not necessarily food here, but it's obviously uh, different musical genres, some of which might not even have a name. So we have some sort of a trip hop type bands here, and we also have bands from uh, the Washington DC hardcore scene. So we can focus on these um, individually. Uh, so in Network X, we can actually ask for each uh, a collection of these islands that we sing here, these different clusters that are kind of disconnected from each other um, by asking for the connected component subgraphs, uh, which you can think of as clusters or in this case, personas. So here's Mr. Potato Head uh, Trip Hop Persona. And that's a collection of these two nodes here, or these two bands. And we can ask for recommendations just for those two artists here. So what we're looking at now is a function that says, uh, take the selected bands, so that's Porsche's Head and DJ Shadow, and ask uh, the Graph API to return what is significantly connected to uh, people who like those bands, um, excluding all of the bands that the originating user has in his current list of bands. So we don't want to recommend him um, any bands that he already happens to have in his list. So we use an exclude clause here to say, these are the things that I don't want back. And the include clause in the previous uh, part of the graph query is saying where we want to start from. 
And again, this is using the uh, significant significance algorithms. So it's not going to recommend the Beatles as an answer to every single question. It's actually going to recognize that a band like Massive Attack is what we call uncommonly common in the uh, in the set of users who happen to like Porter's Head and DJ Shadow. Um, that's one example of a persona. Uh, and then we would repeat the same task for different personas or different clusters that we see in the graph. So here's that Washington DC uh, band fan. And we can see that that persona would actually get a different suggestion here. So that's a useful example of uh, working with some real data. Um, you can play around with that concept yourself. Um, and these are the prerequisites for uh, repeating this exercise. So if you download Elasticsearch version 5, install the XPack, install the Python client so we can run the scripts and this network X library. And then, of course, um, the sample data that uh, you could use to use these scripts on. And the scripts themselves are available from that um, bit.ly URL there, bit.ly forward slash persona underscore graph. Um, and you can run those to actually repeat the sort of uh, logic that we've just seen. And of course, you can use the, uh, the graph user interface as well to have a look at examples of these connections and these bands and summarize uh, how they're all connected and explore the data in that way. And frequently, that, that's really an exercise that helps you formulate algorithms. That's certainly what I did um, in trying to uh, create these set of scripts, was that I would actually experiment with various different settings in the graph UI, figure out the graph queries that I wanted to run, um, and then write the Python code that actually repeated that, that exercise. So I hope you find this useful, and uh, yeah, enjoy your recommendations. <laughs>